Hi everyone and welcome to Wednesday's geography lesson um, and in geography today we're going to be looking at who the Anglo-Saxons were and where they came from. So who were the Anglo-Saxons and where did they come from? Do you have any ideas already? Maybe you do. Um, I'm going to start with a map so pause the video and see if you can name the countries that you are looking at. Okay so I'm going to show you um, the next page. Does this map help? I wonder if you um, could see any of these countries. So we've got the distinctive shape of the United Kingdom here and Sussex is probably just about down here. Yeah, there's the Isle of Wight. Um, we've got Ireland and Northern Ireland next to it. We've got um, just up in the corner here, the tip of Norway. And then we've got Denmark, Germany, the Netherlands, Belgium and France although you can't see all of those countries. Um, and in between us and those countries, there's the English Channel. Now, um, these countries weren't necessarily there back in the Anglo-Saxon time period, but I'm using this map just so we can kind of see where the Anglo-Saxons would have come from, um, because looking at the modern day countries will help us label kind of roughly geographically where, the, where those people, where the people migrated from, where they came from. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, so the Anglo-Saxons were actually made up of a group of different people from different places who migrated to um, to mainland England um, and they came for a variety of reasons that we're going to explore in a moment. So if you just have a look at the map for a moment, um, there were a group of people called the Jutes who came from the area that we now know as Belgium and you can see that they came and settled sort of towards the south of England, um, more towards the southwest, so kind of Devon area. And then we've got the Frisians, who were a group of people um, who came from the area that we know now as Holland. And you can see that they kind of came um, mostly to the south of England as well, uh, maybe even Sussex. And then we've got the Saxons, who um, were from what we know as Germany, so German speaking. And we talked about Germanic art uh, influencing the Anglo-Saxons. So, you know, Germany, Germanic art, same, same people, same place. Um, and you can see that they came and they settled sort of towards the um, east of England, uh, north, east, south, west, remember. Um, and then we've got the Angles from Denmark, um, and they came and settled sort of on the um, east coast as well. You also had a group of people called the Picts who were trying to invade and come down from Scotland. Um, and the Scots, strangely, um, you think that the Scots were, were from Scotland, but uh, there, were, the, there was a group of people called the, um, the Scotty or the Scots, and they came from um, the area known as Ireland, and they came um, to the West Coast. And so back during that time, you can see that there were lots of people coming to England from all different uh, places. It was kind of um, having people come to it from all different sides, wasn't it? So let's go back to history just for a moment, just so you can start to understand why they, these people came to settle. Um, so I want to give you a bit of a context of when the Anglo-Saxon time period was. So if we imagine a number line here, uh, not a number line, a timeline, <laughs> um, I've put zero here. So this is like um, kind of like the birth of Christ or um, the, the point where we measure history from when we're talking about really sort of past ancient events and more modern day events. So zero, you might have heard the, the terms um, BC and AD or you might have heard BCE as well. So everything before the zero counting back in time. So we got um, 800 BC and then we go back to 2200 BC and then even further back to 2950 BC they're all um, before Christ or before common era and then all the times after zero are AD times and anno, anno domini I think it stands for um, up until present day so if we go way back in time you can see you know we've been studying Egypt haven't we so um, we've got the first kings of Egypt way way back so that was well before the Anglo-Saxon time period um, then in England, about 2200 BC, you had Stonehenge um, probably being built, um, I think it's about then. And then just around sort of 1000 BC or 800 BC until 43 AD, that's when the Iron Age was, Iron Age Britain. So lots of hill forts being built, like the one up on the Cisbury Ring, I think. Uh, so then we've got the Romans who invaded in AD 43. 
uh, they successfully invaded Britain and brought their armies um, to our shores. And you probably learned about the, the Romans already. And the Romans stayed and conquered different parts of Britain. And they stayed until about 410 AD. And so that's when the Anglo-Saxon time period kind of starts. Um, and we say that the Anglo-Saxon time period was from 410 until about 1066. Um, and that's when the Battle of Hastings was, bringing in the sort of medieval era. And then we've got um, the Tudors after that, just some of you might have uh, heard of King Henry VIII, just so you know where he would fit in, and then present day. So there's some information here that you can read, but basically um, the gist of it is that back in 410 AD, the Romans had been in Britain and they were losing control because they were being attacked on all three sides three sides basically um, as we discussed earlier and the Roman Empire weren't able to send any reinforcements because they were stretched the whole empire was kind of shrinking and breaking down and so um, there's some evidence to suggest that the Saxons um, and some of those people from the different areas we've just looked at were perhaps invited to help protect the country from invasion as the Romans were leaving. But when the Romans left, the Germanic speaking Angles, Saxons, Jutes and Frisians, they began to arrive in greater and then greater numbers. Let's have a little look at some of the reasons why. So. Um, Basically, in, in lots of those countries where the Angles, Saxons, Frisians and Jutes were coming from, um, there was more flooding in those areas because there was a lot of polar ice melting at that time um, in history. And so those people were looking for lands that didn't flood so much because they wanted to be able to build houses and grow crops and not have all the stress of um, having those things ruined by floodwaters. And also back in that time, Europe's average temperature was one degree warmer than we have today. And that meant that lots of things like grapes could be grown further north. And so it was really good fertile land for growing crops. Um, and obviously the Romans had left their legacy of things like wine. Um, and also once the Romans had left, a new threat was growing from Viking raiders. And so any of the Frisians, Jutes, Angles, Saxons who had settled previously, um, they might be worried about the Viking threat. And so they might be sending um, messages back to where they came from to invite more people to come and help defend what they had built so far. And so those various Anglo-Saxon groups settled in different parts of the country and they uh, formed several different kingdoms. In fact, there were seven different kingdoms, but they kept changing because these groups kept fighting among each, each other. So we'll explore those another time, but just so you can see, see the different kingdoms that they formed. So those different um, groups of people basically formed the Anglo-Saxon um, group, um, the Anglo-Saxon time period. And I, I suppose England grew out of that. Um, but we can explore that in another lesson. So your task today is to really focus in on these questions. Who were the Anglo-Saxons? Where did they come from? And why did they come? And your task is to use the resources from this lesson to draw a map to show where the Anglo-Saxon people came from and who they were made up of. So you might want to include words like Angles, Saxons, Jutes, Frisians, and show where they came from. And under your map, please explain some of the reasons why those people came and settled in England. Okay, um, good luck, and it will be great to see your work. Um, send it to the Year 5 email. Okay, thank you, bye.